Let's get to it. Today I'm going to talk to you about proper right hand technique and a little bit about the use of the fingernails. You're going to get the six minute powwow. Are you ready? First, be in proper position. You've got to be in proper position to set up really solid technique. So make sure that you're sitting nice and tall. Make sure that your neck is angled so that the headstock is about at your eye level. And all, just make sure you do all of those things you've been taught about proper position because it really does have an impact. Next, I want you to make a fist. Now imagine you're gonna punch a pillow right now. Bam. Or a punching bag, even better. Bam. And when you do that, you don't bend your wrist down like this. You don't bend your wrist up or to the side. You're gonna keep your wrist really straight because that's a strong wrist. Well, it's the same thing with playing the guitar. You want your wrist to be straight. So right here should not be up or down. It should be fairly straight. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to make that fist. I want you to go ahead and put that fist right above your treble strings. Treble strings, remember, are the strings that are closest to the ground, the three highest sounding strings. So go ahead and knock a few times on those strings. Good. Now you might notice when you do that, that your hand is at a bit of an angle right here and that your arm is in contact right here with this edge of the guitar. Now, people with bigger arms and bigger bodies might be slightly more over here or in other positions, but you wanna find that spot where you're really not pulling your shoulder up or pulling it down, where you're just sitting just like you would be if you were reading a book, uh, but you just happen to have a guitar in your hand. All right, so go back to knocking here. And now I want you to take that fist and pull it away from the guitar by about an inch. Okay, that usually works for most people. Now what I want you to do is I want you to release to your fist just a little bit so that you create this kind of round thing like a looking glass. Yeah, just about like this, this curve to your fingers. Now when you do that, you shouldn't be touching the strings. You should be just hovering above them. And if you're hovering above them, what you can do then is just touch them down now and find those three high treble strings. That right there is a great way to work on the basic of, basics of your proper right hand position. Now, you'll notice the thumb too. Well, the thumb, I think it's very useful for the thumb to just rest on one of the bass strings. If you've got a big hand, the sixth string feels great. But if you've got a smaller hand, you might want to let your thumb rest lightly on the fifth string or maybe even the fourth string. But what I want you to notice here is just how relaxed my hand is. My pinky isn't sticking out or touching the guitar. My hand isn't leaning way over here. My wrist isn't tilted far to the side. I've got that generally straight wrist and I've got that really curved relaxed hand. Now I do want to mention that what I'm talking about for this position is for tirando, where you strike a string and you don't hit any other strings when you strike. You just go through a string, you're free. Now that's different than apoyando, which comes from the verb apoyar, to support. Apoyando is rest stroke, and rest stroke, I will say, has a slightly, slightly different position. For rest stroke, our hand needs to be just a little bit higher and our fingers a little more open. If your teacher's having you work on rest stroke, what you can do is follow the same advice, make the fist, relax the hand, but then just open it a little bit more, and then place your fingers on, let's say, the first string. And you can practice alternating, taking turns, playing like this by pushing the string into the guitar and bouncing off the string behind it. That's rest stroke. All right, now there's very little time for me to talk now about uh, the right hand nails, but I'll just put it very simply. Number one, you want to get your right hand technique down solid before you grow out your nails. That's my opinion. Number two, when you're ready to grow out your nails, you don't want to grow them out too long. You want them to just peak above the flesh of your fingertip. And there are a lot of different opinions about what shape you should use. Some people believe you should use a bit of a ramp. 
so that the nail gets longer toward the outside part of your hand. And then there are a lot of other people who believe you should just simply follow the contour of your fingertip exactly. So you just let your nail be almost an extension of your finger. That's my philosophy. It works really well for the two different techniques we talked about today, tirando and apoyando, free stroke and rest stroke. Now for keeping them smooth, you don't want to use nail clippers, but you'll want to use a nail file. And again, there's a lot of advice out there about that if you, if you search it out, but usually you can use a glass file or a diamond dust file. Those are the best because they won't tear up the nail too much. You'll hold it at a 45 degree angle to your nail, so about like that, and then you can either move your hand or move the file and just keep careful look to create a really, really um, smooth shape. And, uh, and then you'll want to buff that or smooth it out with 500 uh, or, or higher sandpaper or a nail buffer. All right, there we go, we're done. Happy guitar playing. Rest stroke technique is a right hand technique, which means we'll be working with the hand that produces and makes sound. For today's lesson, I'm just going to keep my left arm comfortably to my side, or sometimes I'll rest it on my knee. So the rest stroke technique is something that we use when we want to sound louder, when we want to establish a little bit more of a presence, or whenever we're feeling like changing up the sound quality of our guitar playing. So the rest stroke technique is characterized by having a finger pluck a string and then coming to rest on the adjacent string, or what I like to call the next door neighbor string. So if I want to do a rest stroke on the first string of the guitar, that means that after I'm done plucking, my first finger will come to rest on the second string. Let's go ahead together and take four rest strokes on our first string using our index fingers. So load up on the first string and let's play four rest strokes. One, two, follow me. Nice. Let's go ahead and try that same idea now on the second string, but this time we'll come to rest on the third string. One, two, ready, play. We can use other fingers of our right hand to also do the rest stroke. We've been using our index, but now let's take a chance to try to use our second finger, our middle finger. The same principles apply, where the finger will pluck a string and then come to rest on the adjacent string. Let's take four strokes with our middle finger on that first string of the guitar. One, two, ready, play. When I'm playing rest strokes, I'm having my thumb, which is an inactive member of this uh, of my hand right now. I'm just I'm just having it sit down on one of the strings I'm not using. So sometimes I have it sit on the fourth, or sometimes I have it sit on the fifth. Check it out. If I have a rest stroke happening with my first finger, my thumb is just kind of comfortably anchored over here on the fourth string. Having that little anchor down makes my right hand just feel a little bit more balanced and has me being a little bit more accurate with my string plucks. Let's go ahead and put our thumb on that fourth string and we're gonna take four strokes with our index finger and four strokes with our second finger, all on the first string. Load up on the first string and follow me. One, two, ready, begin. Switch fingers. Nice job. Now let's kind of incorporate those two ideas and have 
instead of four strokes with one finger and four strokes with the next finger, let's kind of alternate and have our fingers start to walk a little bit. So after I'm done plucking with the index finger, I'll have the second finger follow it. And after the second finger, I'll recycle back to my first finger and I'll just continue that process having my fingers walk while I'm playing. Okay, let's do eight strokes of rest stroke on the first string, alternating our fingers, starting with the index. One, two, ready, begin. Nice job. Let's see if we can play four strokes on the first string and then switch over in doing four strokes on the second string. Again, trying to alternate our fingers while we're doing that. So I'm gonna start on the first, thumb loaded up on the fourth string just for stability. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. String switch. Great job. So this is the rest stroke technique, and it's a great technique to get started in your guitar playing and can really help you get some results in your sound. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again in another lesson and have some happy playing. Free stroke is one of the most versatile uh, techniques that we do on our instrument. It applies to almost every style of music. In fact, finger style guitar players in popular music use free stroke almost exclusively. Uh, so it's gonna be something that will serve you well no matter what style you're, you're planning on spending most of your time playing. Um, we're going to start about talking about just the concept of how we're going to move our fingers and we're going to do it away from the guitar first so that we can really explore the technique before we try and do it on the instrument. We start our stroke from the large knuckle joint just like with every other kind of stroke we'll do. We're going to follow through in towards the palm and then reflexively release and it, it just kind of comes right back to where it started in towards the palm and reflexively release in towards the palm and reflexively release. Keep an eye that your, your fingers are the ones doing all the work and that you're not plucking the strings by moving your whole hand or your wrist to your arm. You wanna make sure that the fingers are doing all the work. And we can start with moving all the fingers together to kind of help them train to relax. And then you can eventually work your way towards moving one finger at a time. Also take note that as they, they follow through, they empty the tension and relax, they basically return to the more or less to the same starting point, right? They're not holding in, nor are they when they release extending further than, than where they started. Our goal is to kind of let them naturally relax to their starting point. So before we take this to the guitar, I wanna talk about one more thing, and that is exactly where on the nail fingertip um, you're coming into contact with the string. We wanna come off the left side of the fingertip. I have nails, you may not have nails, that's just fine, but we wanna be aiming towards the left side of the fingertip. If we come too straight on, we're often gonna get kind of a brighter sound. If we um, bend the wrist, we're gonna end up with all kinds of pain. So somewhere just on the left side of the fingertip, nail, no nail at this point, it doesn't matter. If you have a nail, just make sure that it has a nice ramp so the string can just slide right mm. off of that tip of your finger as you push through the string. So now that we've talked about how the fingers move and exactly where you're going to touch the string on your finger, fingertip, now we're ready to go ahead and try and apply all of this and actually start plucking the strings. We're gonna start by planting the thumb on the fourth string. This serves as our anchor. It's always great to have an anchor when you're learning a, a new stroke. I actually play with my thumb planted as often as possible, regardless of the degree of difficulty of the music I'm playing. And then that's our anchor, and then we plant our index finger, our eye finger on the third string. This is gonna be our action finger here. So we're checking that our, our finger is planted on the left side, our contact point is nice. We're checking that our large knuckle joint is pretty much over top of the string we're gonna pluck. That's gonna allow the trajectory of the finger to swing through the string. And we're checking that everything in our body is nice and relaxed. And once 
we've done our checklist of are we planted really nicely? Are all these fingers curved and, and ready to work? We don't want any fingers straight. Are, are we all curved? Are we relaxed? Is the setup right? We're ready to play. So the action comes and we're, I'm going to describe it first and then I'll show it. We're going to push through the string. That's step one. We're going to push in and down and back in towards the guitar. We're going to push down, then we'll release the string, at which point it will make sound. And then we're going to let the finger reflexively relax, release the tension. Just think of emptying it, letting it go. All these three steps, they happen instantaneously. It's a very quick motion, but we have to really be able to separate one idea from the next. So it's the push through the string, it's the follow through, and it's the reflexive release. I'll demonstrate. All my fingers pushed through, all my fingers followed through and relaxed. Just a quick reminder that as you get going with this, at first you can be studying movement this way and then eventually you move towards just one finger moving while the others are relaxed and waiting to do the next job. There are a variety of ways in which you can start to practice this on your own. Let me show you some of the different kind of uh, little exercises you can make up on your own to practice free stroke in a way that you find most interesting. So if we want to get a little bit more advanced with what we're doing, we just did an I before. You can do the same thing with just M. Push through, follow through, relax. Right? So we can do it with all the fingers, with I, with M, with A. Then we can do what we call alternating, where we do one finger and then the other. Usually we go back and forth at this point when we're just starting back and forth between I and M in our, our alternating. That's kind of like walking down the street. You don't want to always walk with your right foot. You want to alternate right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. It helps us walk faster, more effectively, less injury, right? So same thing in playing guitar. If you're going to be doing finger style, you're either going to be wanting to do a two finger pattern, which we call alternating, or a three finger pattern which we'll call arpeggios, and we'll do a lot more of that later. But as you do these for now, when you're just learning the technique, my strong recommendation is that you always prepare the finger on the string before you play. So you're never just swiping at the string. So it's gonna look something like this. I, and then I'll prepare my M finger on the string, and then I'll play it. And I'll prepare my I finger. Prepare prepare. So I'm always touching the string and resting there for a moment, feeling the contact before I start. Um, that would look a little bit like this if I was going to do an arpeggio. I might prepare all three fingers at once. I on the third string. M is already planted on the second string. And A is already planted on the first string. And I just do one follow through at a time. You'll get more on arpeggios later, but those are some ways you can start to experiment with how to bring uh, free stroke into your practice. So far, we've been talking about the fingers and how to play free stroke, but we also want to be able to do the same technique with our thumb, the same concept really in terms of movement, but the thumb presents a little bit differently. So just like in the fingers, we have a, a knuckle joint, a large joint, a middle joint, and a tip joint. On the thumb, we, it's easy to see our tip joint and then we have this kind of what seems like a middle joint. We often think of this as the root joint, but it's not. Our thumb actually joins the wrist all the way back here. And this is where we want to originate the motion from. Just like when we did fingers, we originated the motion from here. So we want to originate all the motion for our, our free strokes from all the way back here. So for this, I'm going to go ahead, just like when we play, we're playing with the fingers, we planted the thumb. I'm going to plant the fingers and we're just going to put the thumb on the sixth string. And in order for the motion to happen, we're going to start it all the way back here. We're going to push the string down, follow through, and reflexively release. And the reflexive release on this one is just kind of an emptying of the tension. We don't usually want to stay all the way down here, but it's not quite as natural to come all the way back because maybe we're going to play another string that's much more common with the thumb. So we're going to work on the concept of just making sure you're empty of the tension, empty of tension. So the Elephant Song is my favorite game to, to work on free stroke with the thumb. And we have the thumb basically going back and forth between two strings. We start with it planted on the sixth string. Fingers are planted on the first three. And it plays the sixth, follows through, and then it rests on the fifth. And then we play the fifth string, follow through, and return to the sixth. Now you'll notice how quickly I returned to the sixth. 
That's so that we're not getting the same uh, overlapping vibrating sounds. And then we play six again, rest on five immediately, and we play five and return to six. And this is such a great exercise for really just practicing how our thumb moves, but we will get pretty bored with it if we're not careful, right? So, and if we wanna keep interest in what we're doing, this is how I named it the elephant song. I gave it words to get my kids to practice. And the words were very sophisticated. They were, I'm an elephant, because they have a low voice, you get it. Walking, not running, slowly through the jungle. I'm sorry, I hope this isn't too childish. And I like to eat, and then you get to list your favorite foods. My kids would say Oreos. <laughs> student once who I did this with and she would say seaweed oh my goodness and sushi fabulous and my favorite food is guacamole so you could just do this all day long and focus on the idea of you're moving quickly from one string to the next but the tempo of the exercise is very slow and you're focusing on good technique while thinking of all your favorite foods does it get better than that enjoy the elephant song So we're at the end of our lesson on free stroke. And um, I think what's important is that we try to approach uh, technique with, with some creativity so that you don't get bored practicing it. It's absolutely no good to us if we're bored while we're doing it. We really wanna keep our mind engaged so that we can focus on improving the quality. So we do have to repeat things to develop some muscle habits um, while we're practicing. That's great quality muscle habits though is, is the, the Point that I want to drive home for you today. So if your brain stops paying attention to what you're doing, don't keep just repeating it. You, you'll probably be playing some old bad habits. Practice slowly. Practice with focus. When you get bored with something, change up the, the way that you're looking at the exercise. You can practice single fingers. You can practice art, uh, alternating. You can practice arpeggio combinations, which we'll have more videos about in the future. Um, you can do all kinds of different things while focusing on free stroke. With a thumb, you can throw in that elephant song. You can make up your own song that, that uh, kind of plays with that, that theme or that idea. Make up your own idea of how you want to continue to involve free stroke in your daily practice because it's such a fundamentally important part of being a great guitar player. Strumming is a core element of how we create rhythm on our guitar. It's how we connect chords and bring them to life. It's how we lay down a groove. And it's how we play our favorite songs, write songs, and jam with friends. When we start strumming, we always want to make sure that we're starting in a good sitting position. More rock pop style with the guitar on the right leg, great. If you're in more of a classical style, the setup for the strum is going to be the same. Our first point of interest is the elbow. This is our main hinge and our main point of where the strum is going to originate from. So we want to make sure that that elbow has free range of motion and can move easily and smoothly. If it's too far back, we lose the elbow hinge. If the elbow is pushed forward, we kind of lose balance and it puts us in a very awkward and tiring position. So make sure that elbow is in, is in a good spot to be moving freely and smoothly. We need to be able to move down and up using that elbow joint. Next, we move our attention to the wrist. We want this wrist to be nice and straight. In fact, we should be able to draw a straight line from our elbow to our wrist to the big knuckle. This allows us to be in relaxed position and at the optimum angle for strumming. We wanna avoid cranking the wrist in, which is pulling the fingers or the pick down towards the strings or flipping the wrist out. So going for that nice straight wrist angle is gonna be ideal. Moving to the fingers, it's up to you. You get to decide whether or not you wanna strum with your fingers or strum with a pick. If you're gonna strum with the fingers, we're strumming with the back of the fingers, not strumming with the thumb as we go down. So we want to use the back of the fingers and usually the back half or top third tip of the fingers. If you've got guitar nails like I do, I like to use that top third of the guitar nail on the back of it for my down strum. If you don't have nails, don't worry. Go for the top third of your fingertip and try to avoid that back part of your finger. If you dive in a little too deeply, 
you're gonna hit that very tender part of skin right at the base of the nail, Whew, and that can hurt. If you're using a pick, we wanna make sure that we're holding it lightly and loosely, about as loose as it takes just to hold onto the pick as we strum through. So don't worry if you drop your pick a few times, just hold on just a little bit tighter and that's gonna be perfect. The hand position is gonna be very soft and relaxed, fingers curled, and will look very similar whether we're holding a pick or not holding a pick. So then we wanna make sure that we originate our strumming motion from just above the strings. This allows us to strum with accuracy and to be more consistent in our strumming. When we're ready to do our first strum, we're gonna do a down strum. So this is a motion that moves downward, away from our face, towards the floor, and you'll see it written on music either as a down arrow, sometimes as the letter D for down, sometimes as the word down, and sometimes as the classical symbol for violin down bow, and which looks like a staple. Now that we're ready to strum, we've got our hand relaxed, we've got the hinge of our elbow, our nice straight wrist, and either our pick or our fingers ready. We're gonna brush across the top of the strings. We're gonna avoid any extra tension or driving through. We just wanna brush across the top, and we're gonna do it in one quick, smooth motion. The quick, smooth motion allows us to get one singular sound, which is the strum. We want to avoid dragging the pick or dragging our fingers through the strings, which gets more of an arpeggio sound, where we can start to pick out individual notes of the strings. We want to hear those six strings as a group. There are a couple ways that we can practice our strums, and we can do it the first way that we just did, which is strumming the open strings. But it's not necessarily the best sound. If you're looking for something a little quieter that you can practice with other people around or with other guitarists in the room, we can go ahead and take that left hand, lightly drape the four fingers over all six strings, barely touching, just touching enough, not pressing down, so that we get a nice mute strum. Or if you're already familiar and comfortable with some chords, you can go ahead and grab your favorite chord and practice your strums that way. Here's a little E minor. So we're going to do a count of four, and we're going to put a down strum on count number one. So this is going to sound like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's a nice, simple down strum. We've got four counts. We're starting to feel the pulse, starting to feel the rhythm. Next, we wanna take that strumming arm and turn it into a clock that's gonna help us keep time while we play music. So now we're gonna strum on beats one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next, let's actually put some real ghost strums into this. We're gonna do our same four counts. We're gonna go back to only doing a down strum on the first beat, but now we're gonna keep track of beats two, three, and four by doing a ghost strum. Now a ghost strum is where we actually miss the strings on purpose, but that lets our arm keep its clock and keep its rhythm rolling and keeps our mind on track with the beats. One, two, three, four. 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 So as you practice your strumming, you can start to put strums on any of the beats or ghost strums on any of the beats of your choice. Thanks for tuning in today, and next week we'll be introduced to our friend, the Upstrum, and we'll start looking at some more complex strumming patterns. Happy strumming.